I'm remembering how to stop this thing. It's Shift Command 2. John Lopez just told me. Welcome to another wonderful edition of Glad You Asked. Is it Glad You Asked Dot Today? Or is it just Glad You Asked? Glad You Asked Dot Today, but the show is just Glad You Asked. Oh, okay. Well, I'm no longer confused. Hello, I'm Jeff Henderson, footwear designer. Footwear designer, proud father of three young men who are all better at basketball than you are. <laughs> Than I ever was. Actually, I, let's be honest. Number two, he's a soccer player. He cannot use his hands ever. So he can cook, but he cannot use his hands to play any sport. So that's different. That's different. My statement still stands. <laughs> uh, who are you, good sir? Who are you, good sir? I'm John Lopez, New York City-based sports photographer. Sports photographer. Now, being a sports photographer means you have to click on time and be ready for that moment. But about three days in a row, John Lopez is like 15 minutes late, which I have to say is much better than the day he didn't even show up because he was like, yo, I had a shoot last night and I was here and there and I woke up at four and I went back to sleep and he didn't even show up to Dear Mama where we hang out at Dear Mama, the place named after Tupac songs. Uh, but... Anything to say about that? Ouch. Will? Uh, I'm, my, my, I called you my Will? My record is still better than one of our good friends who's based out on the West Coast. We're not going to mention any Will names. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yo, today on today's episode, we are going to, and I had the screen all blank, so I'm going to put some extra stuff on there so you can see. Uh, we're going to go to part two of Cutting Sections. Glad you asked. If you remember before, we were going through one of the shoes from Slate uh, Goods NYC. And proud sponsor. Proud sponsor. And if you remember... Uh, or you just watched the episode, we were cutting sections using our last profile. We got the section AA, section BB. The reality is we were going so slow, and I decided to speed things up just a tad, that I already went and cut section AA. As you can see through layers here, everything is placed on the proper layers. Oh, you got a question? Slow oh, he's telling me to slow it down. <laughs> sometimes I get a little too excited when I'm going through these things. I'm trying to get to work. I'm busy making shoes here. I don't have time to be explaining everything. Um, <laughs> anyway, we'll get to what we have here is a section. So you see this line here that I created. So this line is showing me where the section pieces will line up. Because again, if you see where the arrows are, and now that I've added the arrows, where you actually cut the section through and see, you want to see what's going on on the inside. And so usually there'd be cross hatching here, but I haven't added that in because... Um, don't feel like doing that basically um, but you can see here this line represents the back of that tooling where I cut it so you want to go through and actually put a line for every line that crosses the green line where you're gonna to have to do something well the reality is I already know that what I've created in the midsole area here is already done what I really need to do is update what's going on the outsole because if you can see all I did here and this was you know life hack big cheat I just copied the outsole from there to there. That's all I did. Um, so I didn't really add much in there. But these lines don't marry, and I'll do this, to where those lines cross. So it's not a exact match of, if you see across this line, where this would be the end of this lug should actually be this line here. So I want to actually make that happen. So what I want to do is copy this line all the way across here. Well, I've done a little cheat, a little extra work. I'm gonna show you, I've already created all of those lines. And I've actually done something else that I'll show you. I've actually colored all these lines orange, and the ones that are the top of the lug right there, I've made those pink. The reason I did that is because by the time I get up here, I forget which is which. So I know that where I have the space between lugs is actually this orange line. So that becomes important when I'm drawing these, where I'm making this happen. So here's the other cheat, again, life hack that I've created, is that I already know that this space here, where you see these gray lines, I'll zoom in here, where you see these gray lines, that is the web. That is the topmost layer, or not topmost layer, that is the deepest layer um, that you can go to from the bottom to see the rubber which is the web, which we've called out as 1.5 millimeters. Well, that equals that area right there. Make sense? Makes sense. Go ahead. Question? Is this drawing, the reason why you're making this perfect right now is not because you're necessarily a perfectionist, but rather because it needs to be technically correct for the factory. Is that right? The factory needs to be able to determine what you're actually doing because if they only look at these lines going in here, um, what's happening here. They don't know what's up, what's down, what's touching the floor, what's higher up. They need to see what you intend to make this part look like. So I, you have to go through and sort of give them 
an overview of what goes up or what goes down. So some people, what they'll do is they'll make this one color in there to show that everything that that color is 1.5 thick and maybe they'll make this area all the tops of the lugs a different color and show that that means something else um, but to actually cut a section and you want to cut enough sections so they can see what it is you mean and some of the ideas you want to give them enough view as to what you're thinking and let them then go through and do all the detail work that they know they have to do because they have to add a particular chamfer like they can't make for too long too deep a straight line because the things won't come out of the mold so they add a slight angle I'm not drawing in those angles because what also happens if you start giving them every bit of, we talked about this before, every bit of information, they think, oh, you're perfect. You know what you're doing. And they start making exactly what you like and don't go through and troubleshoot. And then you're hosed. So you kind of want to give them um, some guidance without telling them everything of their job. So here's one thing that I'll show that is sort of a cheat is that again, these don't have to be perfectly aligned, they just need to be ballpark to what you need. So I'm gonna go through and lock these guys. So the reason I lock them is, control two, you'll see that pop up, is that I don't wanna necessarily That's be able to touch two on this. The Mac. Command two, yes, yes. John Lopez always teaching, always teaching. Um, I know that, again, here's the drop to the ground and here's the tip. So knowing that that's the tip, I'm actually just going to bring this guy by grabbing just the nodes. I don't even know if they're called nodes. Um, might be another Mac thing versus PC. Uh, but I'm just gonna drag that to there. So I really don't have to redraw this thing. I merely have to play with what's already working. So that way, again, less work for me, less work for you. Same job gets done. Now I know that you're grabbing the top and the bottom, not just the bottom. You wanna grab the nodes you wanna move. And if you grab just the bottom and move those, the whole shape changes. The shape changes, and you want them to kind of feed organically. The other part is that you lose in there, which is this wonderful tool that creates this radius that I can move however I want. So if you move one of these lines in that connection, you lose the ability to change that radius. Oh, I say that and then. Boom, it does it. Oh, no, I can't move it. So it doesn't really work if you only move one. So I'm happy to move both. And again, I just want to get close enough. This isn't perfect, but it shows that here's a drop, here's a high, here's a low. So that's essentially how I would go through and adjust for what's happening in the section AA. And I would go through and change all of those. And then the last part I would do is, you see here, I have a drop. Now the reality is I cut this section and it wasn't a perfect cut. You see that if I actually cut a section here, I would miss most, most of these letters. And I would get just, in, in a perfect detail drawing, what I would end up with, and I'll draw, I'll unlock this, and show this line here. Uh, let's see, sometimes I lose the bars that pop in. And that may be just something that somebody can tell me on the internet how to fix. I can't see some things when I drag and drop. So you see there, if I were to actually cut a section through there, the depth of this would be that wide. Well, if I put that like in a drawing, maybe no one's gonna really notice that. And so the two things that you do that are a little bit of a cheat is basically you wanna cut that out. Let's see. And say how deep you wanna cut it. And while I might use the offset tool, I'm not using it here. Because again, I just need them to get a general idea that this is where my logo is going. And I'll come in here. And I want to make sure that I'm on my outsole layer so that they're working together. And I'm going to use my fancy divide tool. Now that on my, my computer, because I've got things organized, I now know where things are. <laughs> and so I'll take that. And now I can take these pieces that I no longer need. Did the bottom just up. change color or just assume the color of the top most layer? It just, yeah. So it took that. And actually what's interesting is usually it'll divide and they'll all be the same color. So again, I'm learning new things as we go. And here is where I might call out logo. Well, I'll actually show you. And now that I can do right by, oh. I also do the cheat, 
but I'll show you this time is that I'll actually go through and show you at the end of my arrowhead I usually use arrow number nine I'm just probing the arrow number nine sorry I did not pick the and I want to use the arrowhead end over here in stroke I always like nine for whatever reason I'll call it out usually I call my details out in green um, that is what they use in at least drafting for uh, footwear for a lot of companies and I'll say logo recess 1.5 millimeters so it doesn't match up exactly with what's going on here oh and actually I did that on the wrong one if you were paying attention I should have done it up here so I blew it my bad fire me now but that's how you would cut a section you'd actually just show what's going on there so can I can I yeah of add something this is more of a comment than a question can you yeah. zoom in really tight on the logo like really really tight right so one of the things I noticed when you're zooming around in here, like look at that A, that T, right? Mm. And even the lines you drew, these are sharp, crisp lines. No matter right, how right, close right. you zoom in. Can you talk a little bit about why that is? Because in Photoshop, unless I do this in a very specific way, if I zoom in this close to one of my images, it will not look this sharp and crisp. Okay. So in Photoshop, what you're working with is pixels. What we're working with here is pure lines. So... When you have these keystrokes here, those lines are going to be as tight as you make them. You can make them 0.1 as much as you want. And the idea here, and again, this is where the factory will also lead you. My logo here is very tight. So they will go in and say, you know what, Jeff, this is a little too tight to go that deep. So the reality is what you have to imagine is because I'm that close and that deep, they may say, you know what, we're going to come out of here and we're going to offset just enough, say 0.25 millimeters to get you out of there just as a radius to get into like the bottom part which is that tight so they may actually create that for you but the reason the lines are that tight is these are all just lines and it's not pixels creating something so all right so in in programs like illustrator or specifically in illustrator we're working with vector graphics and yes, vector yes, graphics yes. are scalable up and down as much as you want as often as you want and they never pixelate because it's not actually pixels all right so i just wanted to try to draw yeah, that distinction yeah, yeah. And so the other thing is, I think that's really useful. And it was for years, people just would hand draw everything. I tend to give them my Illustrator art as a PDF. So they can take the vectors and they'll import it into their programs, whether they do the software for 2D and 3D, because I want them to follow my lines, at least as a guide, as much as possible. I don't want them to just sort of say, hey, I kind of see it on a napkin and then redraw it from their brain. I want them to actually use my lines as much as possible. So that is one reason why, though I may cheat in my cross sections, they're not actually using my cross sections to build anything. However, when I do side views, when I do bottom views, I actually use the full lines and I make sure things are cut cleanly. I make sure things are as neat as possible. So that way there's not overlapping lines or things that just disappear for no reason. I want them to be able to go, you know what? He wants these lines here. We're going to put those lines there. So the vectors are very useful, I guess, in that regard. And are you including these lines that you have here? No, no, no. So or? I'm very sure to go through and before I send any file over, I go through and all my construction lines. I get rid of. Uh, you can see my construction lines from building just different parts of the sole. I take all of those out. I won't even include the parts that I've sort of laid out for you guys, which I have locked on this layer, um, because I know that they will only serve as a distraction to the people who are building it because they go, oh, is this 12? Is this 24? I don't want them to know that. This is for you guys just to kind of see what we're working with. Um, and next time, we'll go cut section CC, um, show you that. I may show you that a little later. I have some other work that I want to show you guys uh, while I'm at this stage uh, in the process. So we'll get to that next episode. Amazing. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Glad You Asked. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, you can hit us up at yo at gladyouasked.today. Thank you, and see you later. There you go. Peace. Command shift two.